A key component to design is having things in their proper places. In Chief Architect, we can precisely move objects by using dimensions. Regardless of if a dimension is manually drawn, automatically placed, or temporary, if an object is located by a dimension, it can be moved with that dimension. Let's start with walls, for example. Here we've drawn a basic plan with walls and have used the Auto Exterior Dimension tool to generate a bunch of dimensions. If we select one of these walls, there are several dimensions that become available for edit. We can identify these dimensions by their color. The editable dimensions turn gray instead of the dark blue typical of dimensions. If we have trouble distinguishing the difference, we can go to Preferences and on the Color panel, change the selection line color to something that will stand out more. For this video, we'll use orange. Any object we select will also be outlined in this color. Again, we'll select the wall and we can see that all of the dimensions that locate this wall in some way are orange and the ones that are irrelevant are still the default dark blue. With the wall selected, we can move our mouse over one of the orange dimensions and notice that another indicator that we can use this dimension to modify our wall in some way appears, a pointing hand cursor. We'll left click when we have our mouse over a dimension we want to modify and we have that pointing hand. This will open a text editor and we can type in the new value we'd like to see. The wall will move to accommodate this new value. Depending on how a dimension is locating a wall, we can get some additional control over how the wall moves when a new value is added. For example, if we click on a dimension that is perpendicular to the wall we have selected, we can see two buttons. The first option is a button called Move Both Ends. When this mode is active, if there are any walls connected to the ends of this selected wall, forming a corner, they will maintain their corner connections and stretch or shrink following the location of our selected wall. The second button is called Move Object. When this mode is active, the selected wall will move independently of the walls connected at the corners, leaving them behind when it moves. If we select a dimension that is parallel to the wall we have selected, we get three mouse buttons instead of two in most instances. If we select a wall that is vertical on screen, we'll see Move Top End, Move Both Ends, and move bottom end. As you might expect, these options allow us to choose which end of the wall will move when we change the dimension value. If we choose move top end, then the top end of the wall will move and the bottom end of the wall will remain stationary. Occasionally, when we click on a dimension that is parallel to a wall, we'll get just one option that is not toggleable. This happens when we select a dimension where only one end of that dimension is locating our selected wall. The other end is typically locating a wall that is perpendicular. If we deselect the wall and click on the dimension directly, we can review the location of the extension handles for this dimension. Notice that this end of the dimension isn't reaching out to our wall like the other side. It is instead locating this wall that is perpendicular to our wall. There is only one way this wall can move with this dimension, so we only get that one option when we select this dimension. Let's look at doors and windows next. When we click on a window or a door and we move our mouse cursor over a dimension that is locating that opening, we once again see the pointing hand. If we click on that value, we can change it and the opening will move to accommodate that new value. However, if we mouse over the dimension that shows how wide this opening is, we do not get a pointing hand. That is because there isn't anything telling the program how the object should move. If we click on one of the sides of the opening, we can get a red edit handle this is the selected edge, so when we move the mouse over the dimension, we get our pointing hand and can click to edit the dimension. The side of the opening with the red edit handle will move to accommodate our new value.
we can also move and resize cabinets and symbol objects from the library. When we click on one of these and click on a dimension to move it, notice that we have two buttons. The first is move both ends. This means that we'll move the side of the cabinet, thus modifying the size of the cabinet. The second is move object. This is the one that is selected by default and is the one we'll use most often. When the mode is selected, when we modify the dimension value, the whole object will move and not just the side. When we click on the dimension that notates the width of the object, the side closest to where we clicked will be the side that moves to accommodate our dimension. For example, we'll click on this side, then click the dimension value and change it. Notice that the side we clicked on was the side that moved. We can do similarly with CAD, though we have a slightly different behavior. When we click on a CAD-based object, such as a line, polyline, countertop, backsplash, 3D solid or landing, we automatically see a selected edge highlighted. That means if we select a dimension measuring the distance from this object to something else, if we do not select the option to move object, it will always move the side, which will result in reshaping the object and not moving it. We hope this video has helped explain how to use dimensions to precisely locate objects in your plan. If you'd like to dive deeper into the subject, please review our built-in help by going to the Help menu within the software and clicking Launch Help. Here you will be able to easily search the reference manual for additional information on dimensions and their uses.